settle down. Well, you know, he's, we ain't worried about it. He's our really sharp, unruly child. Let's, let's, let's go to the Father. Most precious Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for allowing us to come together here to worship you, to study your word. We ask that you just plow our hearts open to allow us to receive the seed that you give us. Open our ears to help us to understand what it is that you're going to give us tonight. We love you, Father. We thank you for your love and devotion. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. And, uh, Amen, brother. We're, we're going to start out with 156. Brown, Brown book. book. I'm sorry. I believe we'll sing all three verses. precious word that we study that men will, will confess their love of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. before men. And so many times you hear that said, well why won't men stand up and say it? Well, if you'd have been in that room, you'd have got a ear full, I'm telling you. you sure and whenever I started home and got to thinking about it, I said this has got to be what it was like back in Jesus' day when the apostles and the people got together and broke bread and uh, Praise the Lord and talked about the problems and, and all this stuff and it just it took me back. I said, Thank you, Lord, for showing me what it could be like. 
to have godly people around you, working with you, praying with you, and helping to hold you up. It's really a blessing, and I thank them for it. Amen. It is a blessing when a bunch of people just get together Amen. and start praising God. Amen. And it is. It lifts your soul. Anyone else? Psalm. Yeah, maybe.
I'm going to get up this afternoon testify for the Lord this evening. Um, this morning, well, last night, we uh, didn't know that Sister Debbie had such a long week, and I contacted her late yesterday evening, and I asked her, I said, um, what are we going to be learning on tomorrow? She says, oh, no. I forgot. <laughs> well, little did she realize, but God moved anyway. And he put just the right thing in her lesson lap this last night. As she was doing homecoming, all of her teachers kept saying, why don't you talk about songs? Why don't you talk about songs? Why don't you talk about songs? Well, that told her in her head to talk about psalms. So we're in the book of Psalms now. <laughs> so the good Lord just, he, he just came and he blessed us this morning with her being so full of energy, even though she had to stay at that school until midnight after having the last three days, she might have gotten 11 hours of sleep in three days stretch. And this morning she was full of energy when she came to Sunday school and thank the Lord that she was able to get home and get safe and, and get a nap. <clears throat> Possibly she's laying down resting right now because she's so give out. But I just want to praise God for all that he did in her life and in ours this week and today. Amen. It's just amazing at how he works and gives us the strength when we need it the most when we don't have it in us to give any more, he pulls it out and says, here, I've got it for you. Amen. It's just amazing how God does that. So I praise him today for that. Amen. 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 Thank you. You understood. Anyone else?
still was magical. It was really good. It was awesome. We loved to hear her sing. Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. It's good to see all of you here tonight. And uh, there's a lot here and a lot not here. Uh, we were, uh, Nita and I were over at uh, Enon uh, Baptist Church this morning for their homecoming. That's the church where uh, my mom and dad attended. And uh, and uh, I attended there once in a while. Uh, not very often, not especially not like they did, but when I was a little boy, I attended, and but uh, where Melissa was uh, baptized, and uh, uh, where we got married, yeah. where we got married, yeah, <laughs> a different building, but yeah. Oh yeah, by the way, but, uh, <laughs> I forgot about that. No, I'm just it was the old building, not the new building, but anyway. Did attend that, I did. I was there. <laughs> I really, I was really nervous. I was, I was really nervous, but I was there. And uh, anyway, it's all them shotguns that were pointed at me. So. <laughs> but anyway, it was uh, great to be there with all those folks and uh, uh, people that I've been knowing just about all my life. And they had a great, uh, a, a good crowd there, and a, a great meal after the, uh, after the service. And uh, that was. Uh, they lost their pastor to death. He died on them here this past year, mm -hmm. and uh, they they have not been able to to find them a, a pastor since that time, and uh, they they're still feeling the 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 heartache from that. He's been there for several years, and he's not just a few years older than I am, and he just dropped dead and unexpectedly and. And they're really having a, a difficult time with that, and uh, so we need to remember that church and our prayers. Uh, they they still have their congregation intact. Uh, they that's that's a blessing because he's been dead now for how long? Uh, a few a few months, several months. But it's unusual when a, when a church loses their pastor that the, the the body can just stay together like that. It's it's a hard thing to do, but they're doing a good job of it. So we need to pray for them and. Just tells me that you know the Lord, the Lord has got that. He's got their church. He's he's in the midst of them. They're still doing all the things that they need to do. They're still singing. They're still worshiping. They're still praising. They're still teaching. They're still reading. They're still doing all of those things and praying. And uh, and the Lord is still in their midst, and he he's blessing them. But they're really having a hard time uh, finding a a pastor. So uh, y'all be in prayer for that group. I want to talk to you tonight uh, about the church. This is probably going to be my last Sunday night that I do anything on the church, and I know we've already quit talking about the church of the Revelation, but, you know, the Bible has so much that we need to know about the church and who we are in Christ and who we are supposed to be in the church. And, you know, there's, so, there's such a great move of, of indignation toward the, the church today. And even people who call themselves Christians have come up with this idea that they don't have to be a part of the church, they don't have to make a commitment to the church. And y'all, that's just not right, it's just not scriptural. It, there's nothing about that, that that makes any sense in the Word of God. Amen? Amen. And uh, when we were in Revelation, you know, the Lord wrote that letter to seven churches. And He wrote those letters to the church, and listen to me, He didn't write the letters to the preacher. Amen. He never mentioned a preacher. He never mentioned a pastor. And not one of those letters that he sent to them, he was talking to his body. He was talking to the body of believers. The pastor is just one of them. Amen. Mm -hmm. He is just one of them. I, I know he's got a calling, and I know there's a thing for the pastor to do. I know there's something that I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to deliver the word to you and help you to understand it. And, and I'm supposed to receive that from God. But he didn't write those letters to the pastor. He wrote it to that church, the body of believers, and he told them what he liked, and he told them what he didn't like. And y'all, we've got to be receptive to Jesus Christ and understanding our role as a, as a Christian man or woman in his church. There is a role to be played. This is his church. It's not our church. I made a statement this morning about Lake, my church at Lake Country, and, and immediately the Lord said, mm-mm. 
No, no, that's not the way this works, Brother Gary. And, and so it, it's not my church, although we all make that remark, this is my church, this is where I, that just means that's where I go to church. But in, in reality, this is it's Jesus Christ's church. The church belongs to him. And so we need to understand how we're supposed to act and what we're supposed to know uh, about the church. And we're going we're gonna to get a lot of Colossians tonight. So if you have your Bibles, let's go ahead and turn into the book of Colossians. And, and uh, the, the only, only scripture that's not in from the book of Colossians is going to come out of Revelation. So uh, let's uh, go ahead and I need some scripture readers. I know how laid back we are. Brother Gary, you want uh, go ahead and do Colossians 1 and 18. Brother Jeremiah, Colossians uh, 1, 11 through 14. Got two more. Anybody want one? Brother Jim, uh, Colossians 2 and 19. And Melissa, you get your hand up over there. Uh, Re Revelation uh, 21, verses 22 and 23. Now, that's not a whole lot of scriptures for tonight, but there's a whole lot of truth in these scriptures. There's a whole lot that we need to learn from these scriptures and, and Paul's letters. And by the way, not only did the Lord send letters to the churches, the, 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 the scriptures and the books that we're talking about that the Apostle Paul wrote are letters he wrote to churches explaining to them how the Holy Spirit had shown them what they needed to do and how they needed to act. And uh, they were being corresponding uh, to uh, Paul and telling... Uh, he was in touch with all the churches that he had uh, he, he had started through the Lord, and uh, and uh, he was concerned with them and what was going on with them. And all the time he's locked up, not knowing how much longer he's going to live. And yet, where's his heart? His heart with his with these people that he has led to Jesus Christ, and he has helped them establish churches, and he has helped them to find pastors to lead them. That's what the book uh, uh, the. The, the books of First and Second Timothy is to a young man that he's helping to become a pastor of church, and and so uh, this uh, this letter to the Colossians, there's a lot of truth in it, and what Paul tells us from through the Holy Spirit that we have the ways we're supposed to act and the things that we're supposed to know in the church, Amen. Church is not just where you come together and everybody says, okay, I go we go we go do three songs, we do a special, we take up offering. We, we, we hear from the preacher and let's go home and eat. We're hungry. And you know what? We're not careful. Church becomes that rut, that, that rut in the road that we can't get out of. If we're not careful, we'll make church a routine and we'll make it a rut that we get in. We never need to do that. Amen? Amen. We need to be able to follow the Spirit because the Spirit leads us into all these things that we're supposed to know. So, uh, Brother Gary, you've got Colossians chapter 1, verse 18. Would you read that for me, please? And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. So what we need to know about the church is who the head of the church is. Amen. Listen to me. I want you to listen and listen hard because a lot of the fights are going in the churches is who runs it. Huh? Uh-huh. Hey, we might, we're in church. Might we get used to the idea the Lord's going to speak to us. And then do you know who runs the church? The pastor? Better be him. Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey, listen to me. If he's not running the church, it ain't his. Amen. All right? If, if, he, if the Lord Jesus Christ is not running the church good then, that church don't belong to Jesus. Now, don't get me wrong. There's some decisions that we're allowed to make. We have uh, we have all kinds of, uh, of uh, committees, and committees are allowed to do things. But you know what? When it comes to the the, the the nuts and the bolts of what holds the church together, it's all about Jesus Christ. If it's not, that church falls apart. Amen. Amen. It will. And so he is. The Bible says here in, in verse eight, uh, 18 of chapter one, he is the head of the body. We are the body. He is the head. Amen. Now you can live without a lot of parts of your body, but you cut the head off, it's pretty much over with. Amen. Amen. Try to live without your head and see how far that goes with you. Amen. You know, we know people, we call them quadriplegics, and I'm not making fun of them, but from the, the here down, the, their body is useless, but they're still alive. Why? Because the head is still there. 
the head still functions. And, and let me tell you what, the head, our head, Jesus Christ, is going to function. It don't make any difference what the rest of the body is doing. That head is going to function. And he's going to be the head of the church. And he's going to make himself known in the church. And when men try to overcome that, thus comes many problems. Amen. And you see fighting, you see bickering, you see backbiting, you see backstabbing, you see all kinds of things going on because somebody wants to run the church. We need to learn to bow down to him, to confess to him, to give him all of the all of the preeminence in the church. We can get that word here in a minute because he is sovereign, he is Lord, he is God. This is his church and we are his people. And there ain't a one of us that's here on our own volition. You're not a member of his church or a member of his body because you said that's what I want. You're a member of his body because the Father drew you into a relationship with him. Amen. Amen. And you said yes, Lord, and you came to Jesus and he saved you and he filled you with his Holy Spirit. And that's the only reason you're a member of his church. Amen. Amen. He's the head of it, y'all. <clears throat> we might as well get that in our head and we know we should never do anything around here without asking him first. Amen. Amen. And you know what? There's a lot of times when you say, you hear people say, well, well, we voted on that and it was it was 52 to 51, so we just went ahead and did it because by George, we had the majority. That's not God. Amen. Amen. That's why church is split. Amen. <laughs> that, that tells me that the Lord tells me, you better think about this a little while before you proceed with that. Amen. That's what he's telling us. And so he said it's, he's the head of the body the church and he, he he makes sure you understand that the church is the body amen uh, who is the beginning and then he says about the church we are the firstborn from the dead who is the beginning the firstborn of the dead uh he he is the firstborn of the dead jesus christ is the one who resurrected and by the way that's what we're supposed to preach in the church jesus christ and him crucified and him resurrected amen amen, amen. amen. because see if he hadn't been crucified, there'd be no forgiveness of our sins. We'd be still killing bulls and goats out there. We'd have to have an altar and bleed them out and do all this crazy stuff. And I'm going to tell you about me, I ain't a butcher, and I don't like blood anyway. But Jesus Christ took care of all that. He took that away from us. So we got to preach that he did that, that he died, that he that knew no sin became sin for me and you. He nails our sins to the cross when we receive him as Savior. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. We Amen. ought to praise Amen. him for that. And, and uh, so, and he was the first one that resurrected. And I said this in the sermon this morning. He was going to get tired of hearing it, but I never get tired of saying it. When John, uh, when John met him in the Book of Revelation, remember what he said? I'm the one that was uh, uh, dead, but I'm alive forevermore. Amen. Amen. He was the first one that resurrected from the dead that way. Amen. And he he got he had something with him. He had keys with him. Remember that. He said, I am that man. I am the one that was dead and I'm alive and I'm alive for everyone. I got the keys to death and hell. Hallelujah. That's the God we serve. That is the head of the church. Amen. Amen. The head of the church. And then it goes on to say from this, he says, and in all things he might have what? The preeminence. Does anybody know what that means? The preeminence. Well, I took the time to look it up for you. So that the preeminence, according to Mr. Webster, is the state or character of being distinguished, supreme, but in this case, sovereign. Amen. Amen. You know what sovereign means? That means that what he says goes, and he's the only one that matters what he says. There you go. Amen. That's, that's what he gets because he is the head of the church. He is the king that we serve. Ooh, Lord, he's the king that we serve. He is our Lord, and because He is our Lord, that means that what He says to us, we must do. We, and when I was uh, doing Experience in God over at the church this morning, all those classes, one of the, uh, there are several of those uh, remarks that Henry Blackaby made that stuck with me, and one of the things that really stuck in this wrinkle up here in his head, I can't remember much of nothing, but he said, since He is our Lord, we never have the right to say to Him, no. Amen? If you say no, Lord, he's not your Lord. Amen. Amen. Right. You you look all through the Bible, them folks that were that were servants and slaves to a master that burned, not tell him no. Amen. They were bad. And and we don't have the right to tell him no. He has the 
preeminence. He is distinguished above everything else. He is supreme and he is sovereign. This is his church. Amen. And we're his body. Amen. All right, the next one. Let's move on to the next one. Jeremiah, you got the uh, uh, same chapter, chapter 1, verses 11 through 14. Would you read that for me, please? Strengthen with all might and according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. So how do you be included in his church and he is the head? Jody testified a while ago and she made a remark about Sister Debbie that she had been really, really busy. Very little sleep in the last three nights and yet this morning eager to teach because the Lord had given her and all that melee, he had given her something that he wanted her to teach and she got excited about that. Look at verse 11. Strengthen with all might. Now where does that strength come from? The strength that we receive from the Lord is a, is a, is a supernatural strength. Amen? He ain't, you remember Samson in the Bible? Now he, that's a man that had this kind of strength. Amen? Where did get, where'd that come from? It came from God. A lot of people say it came from his hair. You know why, why when they cut his hair off that uh, he lost his strength? Because the Bible said he wished not that the Spirit had departed from him because in his insolence to God, God took that from him. Amen. And that was the only thing in obedience to God he had continued to do and he blew that too in the end. That's the reason he lost his strength. Amen. When he humbled himself back to God, he, re he recovered that strength. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And so we are strengthened with all might according to what? His glorious power. Our strength comes from God. When you get to the point where you think, how do I carry on? How do I continue in life? How do I keep going? And everything around me, my world, is falling apart. I can tell you how. If you're a child of God, He will pick you up. That's right. Every time. He will give you strength. Amen. 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 Because of His glorious power. Amen. That's what a benefit of being a child of God. Amen. 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 That's why someone who loses a loved one can go up to a casket and still stand there and smile. Because they know their strength's coming from God because they know their loved one is with Him. Amen. Amen. That's why we can battle disease, why we can battle sickness, and we don't give up, we don't quit. Because He is our strength and He empowers us. And we know whether we win the battle or lose the battle. It's all up to Him. Amen? Amen. Whether we live or whether we die, it's all up to Him. Remember what Paul said about that? If I live, whew, I'm going to live for Christ. Amen. But if I die, listen to me. I'm just going to go to Him. Amen? I'm going to live for Him there too. Amen. That is, what, that is the hope. That is the, the rock that we get to stand on. The faith that we can have in Jesus Christ because of He is the head of the church, because of His preeminence, and because He has all power given to Him. Amen? Mm -hmm. All power in heaven and earth has been given to our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen? And we, through the Holy Spirit of God, can tap into that power. The Bible says that the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation. And the Bible also says that we shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon us. So if you're filled with the Spirit of God, you have the power of God within you. Amen. What limits that power? Somebody tell me real quick. What limits the power that is in us? Amen. It's our belief. It's our faith. If we don't believe God can do it, He probably ain't going to. Amen. That's why it's so important. That's why you can't believe God without having faith. God wants you to have faith. 
Jesus Christ said, if you believe on me, I'm going to give you eternal life glory. Amen? That's faith. That's a little bit of faith. And that's faith in Him. That's what our faith is. It knows that no matter what's going on. He says, He says, so I'm going to give you strength with all might according to His glorious power. I'm going to give you, listen to this, patience and long-suffering with joyfulness. I, I don't know about y'all, but patience is not my virtue. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You ought to see me working on something that I can't fix or having trouble fixing or things ain't going right. You ask me, I mumble and talk, carry on, kick the wall, cry and do all that and get up walk around, come back, lay back down. I was working on that hot water heater the other night at the house. And, and uh, you know how that goes. I got tired of laying there and nothing worked. I couldn't see nothing. Put my glasses on, turn the flashlight on, still couldn't see nothing. I finally got it going, but I'm going to tell you what, I don't have a lot of patience. Amen. The Bible says that in your patience you possess your soul. Amen. I got a long ways to go with patience. But anyway, he says, not only will I make you patient, but he says, I'm going to give you this power so you can be patient. I'm going to give you this power so you can be long-suffering. Now, somebody tell me what the difference between patience and long-suffering is. Maybe when you don't have any patience, you're going to suffer a long time. <laughs> uh, long-suffering is when, when you're able to suffer something for a very long time. Usually patience or lack of patience is something that's quick, immediate. It, it, it'll hit you all, of the, all at once. And so that's the difference. Long suffering is just lack of, uh, or, or giving you patience for a very long time. Amen. And you know what? God rewards patience and he rewards long suffering. And look at what he says. He said, I want you to be patient. I want you to be long suffering. How? With joy. With joy. He's kidding, right? <laughs> no, he's not. He wants us to do it with joy. He wants us to be joyful. Amen. And then he, he goes on and says, giving thanks unto the Father. We need to learn to always give thanks. We need to quit murmuring. We need to quit complaining. We need to quit grappling. We need to talk, quit complaining about what so-and-so is doing and concentrate on the Father. And we need to thank Him and praise Him he, because He has made us to, meet, to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life. Y'all, He has allowed us he has called us into a relationship with His Son so that we can be partakers in, in the glorious work of His church on earth. Amen. We used a scripture this morning at the homecoming uh, from Ephesians where the Bible says that the Lord called, put us all together and we are fitly framed together. We're called to work like this. Amen. Yeah. This is the way we're supposed to be. That's why a little church like that that lost their pastor, they're still like this. You know why? He's called them there, and he's put them there, and they know they're there. They know why they're there. They know they're supposed to be there. They're not going to be anywhere else, and they're just like this, and they know that God's going to deliver someone to them. Amen? Amen? They know that. They believe that. And so he says, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. Y'all, the Lord has delivered us from the dark, darkness of this world. We're bad about it in the church. We talk about how dark it's getting out there. We're delivered from that. And our work is to get as many people out of that darkness into the light. How do you do that? You shine the light on them. You let them see the light of Jesus Christ in your life. And when they see it, they say, I want that light. I want, that, I want to be that person. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to let them see Christ in us. But, and he overcomes the, that. He delivers us from the power of darkness. And I want you to look at this. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. And look at this word. And hath translated us into the kingdom of our, of his dear son. Did y'all catch that? Now, that word translated, I want to look that up for us too. Listen to what it means. Even according to Webster, Webster was pretty smart. I don't know how spiritual he was, but the reason they use some of these words in this King James Version is because this is the way the people who interpreted it understood it. And the word translated means to change the form, condition, or nature. But that's not the only definition of it. Listen to this. This was in my Webster's Dictionary. To convey or remove to heaven without natural death. 
Woo! And look, the scripture says here, he has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us. Think about that definition that I just read you. He has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Do you know what that means? You know what? I've always heard preachers say, God said it, and it might happen a thousand years from now, but when he said it, it's already happened because that's he's God. He's sovereign. Now listen to this. This makes me kind of happy right here. He has translated us while we're here. He has translated us in our salvation. That means in God's eyes, that's the reason Jesus said, if you'll believe on me, I will give you eternal life. You have eternal life. Because when he said it, it was happened. It's already a done deal. It's a done deal. It may not have happened yet because you're still here. But let me tell you what, when you go, you've been translated into glory because the Word told you so. The first part of that definition said what? Yeah, it says that to change, don't give it, uh, to change the form, condition, or nature. So He has changed us from this one. Let, let me tell you what that says to me. Because Paul says it in a different way. Our citizenship is no longer here. He's made us citizens not of this world, but of the one to come. That is his translation to us. He's translated us. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And so we have been translated already. We've been delivered from the power of darkness by Jesus Christ. And he has translated us into the kingdom of his son. Hallelujah. Amen. Does that make you happy? It makes me happy. Amen. And all these naysayers that say, well, that, that don't really ain't what that means, really. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes we have to make the Bible say what we want it to say. And we need to let the Holy Spirit guide us in the truth and let the Holy Spirit show us what He says. And leave our stuff out of it. Amen. Well, you know what that means to me? What's that, brother? The instant. The very instant that we close our eyes towards death, we don't feel death. We're instantly in heaven. Amen. We're translated. That's right. That's, right what, there. That, that's what that verse means to me. Yes, that sir. That means we, you know, we don't necessarily. We're not going to face death. We may be. We may fear it because we don't. Uh, we don't understand it. We don't know. But that verse right there tells me the instant. I lose life. The very instant I lose life, I will be in front of Jesus. And why? Because you've been delivered from darkness. You've been saved. That's what he tells you. You have been saved and you have been translated into his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. In whom, listen to this, but why? In whom we have redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of our sins. Oh, thank God. Thank God. That's why when I'm impatient, I can say, Father, forgive me. And you know what? Just say it in the name of Jesus. And immediately, His blood covers my impatience up and said, and we're good again. I wish it worked with my wife that way. I'm just playing. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> Boy, I got a little bit. Hey, I wish it worked with all of us that way where we could forgive like that. Amen. But we're, we're human. He's God. He has that power. He has that authority. And praise God, He can forgive you that quick. Does that mean there won't be a consequence? <laughs> no. There will always be a consequence for your sin. But that forgiveness is what we seek. Amen? Amen. Amen. Any questions or comments about this scripture right here? Beautiful scripture. I need to circle this pure scripture in your Bible. Circle that word translate. Write down that definition. That, that That's what this means to us. Amen. And the next time somebody tells you, well, you might have been saved one time, but you're lost. Now, uh -huh, I've been translated. <laughs> and let, what, look at their faith when you say that. They'll go, what? And, and take them to this scripture right here and say, look, I've been translated because I know Jesus. Praise God. It's not an excuse to sin. It's a reason to celebrate because His grace is greater than our sin. Right. Hallelujah. His blood is stronger than any sin we can commit. 
Amen. Let's go to the next one. This is a good one too. Uh, Colossians 2 and 19. Brother Jim, you got that one? And not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increaseth with the increase of God. Okay. Now this scripture is very important to us because he said, And not holding a head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together. Now that's a lot of stuff that really don't make a whole lot of sense until you get to the end. Increaseth with the increase of God. You want to increase in power and might? You know what we're supposed to be doing? We're supposed to be glorifying God. We're supposed to be witnessing for God. And the greater we make God in our lives, guess what? The greater we become. Now think about that. The greater we portray God in our life, the greater we become because we increase as he does, as he increases. Amen? That's what it says. It says, uh, knit together, we increase with the increase of God. And I said a while ago, we're fitly joined together. Here it says we're knit together. Amen? I look at my little uh, my little band right here that my sweet little granddaughter made for me this weekend. I had a napkin on the, she, uh, she didn't give me a card for my birthday uh, that was a, uh, so she made me a little band while I was work, working on that water heater. <laughs> and she was standing over me to watch on the blood show. And she thought, Papa needs something. So she made me this little band and it says Papa on it. And she, she didn't have me a card, so she took a napkin off the table and got an ink pen and wrote me a card on there and told me how much she loved me. Amen. It's a simple thing so why. Y'all listen, we're knit together just like this in Christ. Amen. Sure. When I read this scripture, I looked at that band and I thought, how cool. We're knit together. And when y'all, when we, when we bring the Lord God to the forefront of our lives and, and we brag on Him and we live for Him and we let people see Him in us, we are increased. Not here, maybe. But over there, He's writing it all down. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you what. You're not going to do anything for His glory here that you're going to regret when you get there. Amen. You have done nothing for His glory here that He's not going to reward you for when you get there. That's making treasure in heaven. Amen? That's what that's all about. We're created in His likeness unto what? Good works. When the Lord saves you, He creates us in His image, in His likeness. It's not talking about a physical thing. It's talking about a spiritual thing. And we are, 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 are supposed to start good works because that's what Jesus Christ did. And we're supposed to do what He did. And so that's what this is. We increase as He is increased. Now, I'm going to read this. So Y'all didn't write these down because uh, I wanted to read these for you myself. Uh, verse 10 of chapter 2. I want you to look at this scripture right here. It says here, and we are complete where? In him. Ah. That means if we're not in him, we're incomplete. Amen? We are complete in him, which is the head of what? All principality. All principality and power. That means he's over everything. Amen? Amen. He is over everything. The principality, the, the power, we are complete in Him. And let me tell you what, it's an ongoing thing that we live in, in the power of Jesus Christ because we are complete in Him. That means if you don't have Him, you're incomplete. Now I tell people all the time, you see people out here that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ and they keep looking for something. You ever notice that about people? That they'll, they'll try alcohol, They'll try drugs. They're looking for something. There's something that's missing in their lives and they're looking and grasping trying to figure out what it is. Some people think that it's got to be a family, it's got to be a normal looking life and they try to seek that and, and, uh, and their marriage fails and don't work and they say, well, it, it's got to be that. I, I need that in my life. So they reach out there and grab someone else and they'll marry and it may not work again. 
You know what they're what they're missing? They're incomplete. Not because they don't have a husband or a wife or because they don't have a family. They're incomplete because Jesus Christ is not in them. And when they finally figure out that there's a spot for his, his throne to be here and they put him on that throne in their heart, there's something about it that you know everything's going to be okay. Amen. Amen. And so that's what this scripture is telling us. We are complete in him because he is the head of all principality and he has all power. And when we have him, now we got it all. We just got to claim it and we got to use it. That don't mean we demand it from him. Listen to me. There's a lot of preachers that will take advantage of a scripture like this and say we have the right to demand healing. No, we don't. We got the right to demand from God what we want from God. No, we don't. Amen. We got the right to go before him and ask him. <laughs> we can ask him. He might say no. Because see, he's the first and the last. He knows the beginning from the end. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows all that in between. And he knows what he's trying to do in your life. He knows what he's trying to build in your life. He knows what kind of character he's supposed to trying to give you. And you know, he he was persecuted and he went through tribulation and we are gonna be too. That's scripture, that's what he said. Let's look in, uh, in uh, chapter 3, uh, beginning in verse 11. Let me read this to you, and I know we're about to get through. Chapter 3, beginning in verse 11. This is going to be kind of a long reading. So I'm going to read it, go ahead and read this to you, and, and listen to this, what he says. He says, there, there is neither, For there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, Barbarian, <coughs> Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all in all. Y'all, this class warfare that we got don't mean diddly to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ looks at us, he don't see black. He don't see white. He don't see red. He don't see Mexican. He don't see Chinese. When he looks at us, he sees a heart. Amen? Right. And he says this in this scripture right here. He said, no, there's no Greek, Greek, there's no Jew, there's no circumcision or uncircumcision, there's no barbarian, no sickness, bond or free, but Christ is all in all. Right. If they got Christ, I don't care what color they are, I don't care what nation they're from, if they got Christ Jesus, we're brothers in Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's something in common. Amen, brother. Amen? We need to get over it. And realize that it, it ain't just a certain class of people that get saved. Amen. He can't save all people. Look at, look at Paul's letter to the Ephesians. It wasn't just about the Jews. The Gentiles too. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. He got Peter in lots of trouble because he didn't like them Gentiles. <laughs> Amen. Did he you is. see the final the court case this week where the Dallas police officer was convicted? Of shooting the guy that she thought was in her apartment, black guy. Did you not see this? Mm -hmm. His brother on the stand said, "I forgive you." That's a good story, brother. I saw that. <clears throat> I, said, I don't, you know, I don't want you to go to jail. She said, I, "He said, I just want you to, to get Jesus in your life." Yeah. This is the guy who she shot, brother. If that's not Jesus in this man, I don't know what it is. Yeah, that's right. You, Amen. Don't, you don't remember about two or three years ago when a white guy burned down a black church in South Carolina? Oh, yeah. And boy, the national news, they flocked to it because, oh, we got racism, extraordinary, and these people are going to be mad. We're going to help them get mad. And when they got there and interviewed them Christian black people, you remember what they said? We're praying for that man. We won't, we're going to, we already forgave that man. We want that man to get saved. And you know what? They quit reporting on that because they didn't want to put that on TV. That story right up in 12 hours. It, it was gone in 12 hours. You didn't hear anything about that church burning. And, and I tell you what, that's who we're all supposed to be. Amen. Amen. That's the way Jesus works in our life. That's the power He gives us. He gives us the power over hating people. He gives us the power over racism. He gives us the power over that. 
Amen. He gives us that power. Let me read it more. So put on therefore as the elect of God, holy beloved bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another, forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. Whoop! Boy, that's a mouthful, ain't it? If you expected for Jesus to forgive you, you might ought to work out that in your own life and start forgiving people who do you wrong. <laughs> what you just said. Amen. And above all things, put on charity, that's love, which is the bond of per per perfectness, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to thee which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. <coughs> Amen. Amen. We're supposed to let love abound in our lives. We're supposed to let the peace of God rule in our hearts because He's called us as one body. Amen. You know what? We like to separate ourselves. We're the Baptists. There's Pentecostals down there. There's the Assembly of God over there. We can't get along. We don't like one another. There's them old Methodists over there and they're letting all this go on. That ain't what he tells us. He says we're one in the bond of love. We're one in Jesus Christ. Because when he said, upon this rock I will build my church. Amen. 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 That's what he says. And whatsoever you do in word or deed. Now I'll skip one. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns. That sounds like what Debbie heard this week. And spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Y'all, if we could just get this one little short scripture right here. And some people can live that right there. Boy, wouldn't this be a better world for us? The things that eat us alive right now wouldn't bother us so bad. Amen. Because all of this comes in love. We've got one more. Now, in all of this, you say, wow, I don't know where I can do all them things or not. You know, I've been taught this and I've been taught that. And, and uh, you know, it, it's time to put away those things that we have been taught that's not according to the Word of God. And it's time for us to study the Word of God so we'll know what God thinks about things. And how he wants us to live and act in this world to glorify him. We need to know how we're supposed to act. And the Bible tells us that he don't, he don't use arrogance. He can't use pride. Matter of fact, in fact, he said pride go up before destruction and the Holy Spirit before the fall. If you want to go down, get that attitude. Amen. He, that's, that's said in his word. So how does he want us? He wants a broken heart. Listen to me. I don't mean broken crying over your boyfriend or your girlfriend and, or something like that. That ain't what he's talking about. He wants your heart broken before him. That's right. That we recognize in our life, Lord God, we, we hadn't done everything you've asked us to do. God, forgive me for not doing this. Forgive me for not saying this. Forgive me for not acting the way you want me to act. God, forgive me. He wants you broken that way. And he said then he wants you to have a contrite spirit. He wants a broken heart and a contrite spirit. God can use that. Amen. Amen. Because when you humble yourself to Him, whoo, He'll lift you up. Amen. Amen. Missy, you've got this last one. Y'all, I told you a while ago, we've never done anything that in the end we're not going to be glad we did. I believe that with all my heart. I wouldn't be telling you this tonight. And the great thing about it, if you don't believe me, you pick up this book and go right to the back of it. How many of you ever went and looked in the back of a book where you got through reading? If you go back to the back of this book, you're going to find out, guess what? We Woo! We win. <laughs> Amen. All of this stuff that's eating us up right now, you're going to be going, whoop, gone. He's going to take care of it. We ain't got to worry about taking care of it. He's going to do that for us. And when he gets done, brother, there ain't going to be nothing but spirit-filled Christian Amen. men and women that love Jesus Christ. We're all going to be together in one place 
We're going to be knit together. We're going to be fitly framed together. And we're going to be a habitation for our Lord God. And we're going to be in glory with Him. Amen. 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 I done got ahead of Melissa. Melissa, read that for us. Revelation 21, verses 22 and 23. Circle these scriptures in your Bible. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no end of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light of thereof. Amen. Y'all, we're going to go to a place that don't even need a sun, a moon, or stars. We're going to go up to a place it's called a new heaven, a new earth. We're going to be able to walk on streets of gold. We're going to be able to push on gates of fur. We're going to see walls of jasper. We're going to see a sparkling river come out of that throne as it sits on the new earth. And that river is going to flow through the earth. And we're going to get to live in that earth. And the Bible is going to call us kings. And the Bible says that there's going to be no darkness. And there's going to be nothing but light. And there's not going to be even a shadow of turning. Amen. That means you're not that light that's going to be there. It's not even going to let you cast a shadow. Why? Because the Lamb is going to be the light. And His light is an all-encompassing light. Amen. We read about that light a while ago. Remember what we read about that light a while ago? He takes us out of darkness and puts us in light. And He translates us. And this is where we're going to be. When He translates us, we're going to be in this place called glory. This place called heaven. And we're going to be glad we're there. No more death. No more sorrow. No more sickness. Nothing. Not another tear to ever be shed. We're going to have the joy unspeakable and filled with glory like we've never seen it before. I want to go there, don't you? Amen. Amen. And in order for me to go there, I got to know Jesus right here. I got to be saved. If I want to be translated, I got to know Him as my Savior. I got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I've got to live for Him. Amen. Any comments? Verse 27, Paul, and that kind of, kind of wraps that up. Read it. And there shall not in no way, in no wise, enter into any, enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. 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 Ain't you ain't be nothing, you ain't going. nothing that's going to defile anything in that place. There will be no sin enter in. Y'all, He's going to make us new people. He's going to resurrect these old gaming bodies. He's going to make them beautiful bodies like unto His own. He's going to put our souls back with our bodies. And we're going to know each other. We're going to talk to each other. We're going to eat together. Hey, who knows? We might even get to go fishing and you ain't going to need a fishing license. Amen. <laughs> hey, listen to me. He ain't, he, he, he's going to let you have land. I, I, it ain't, uh, I'm going to tell you. I tell people all the time, when I get to heaven, I'm going to be a farmer and I'm going to grow the biggest watermelons the world has ever seen. Amen. And every one I plant is going to grow and every one that grows is going to be this big and every one of them is going to be so sweet. They're going to taste better and you think, I can't even grow one any better and the next one's going to be better. You know why? Because everything's going to be good over there. That's right. Amen, I, brother. I want to be there. Amen. I want to go there. Do you? Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. All you got to do is make him Lord of your life. And he'll see that that happens. And when he writes that name down in the Lamb's Book of Life, he don't have no erasure on that pen. Don't you think he does? He don't erase nobody's name. Amen. It'll be waiting on you when you get there. Brother, the best reward of this world pale in comparison to the simplest thing of this. Amen. Amen. The best thing you can think of in this world that you could ever have is not even a drop in the bucket as we call it. He told us in the Word that our eyes and our ears can't hear or comprehend 
what's going to be like over there. There's nothing in this world, in this wicked world, that's going to compare Amen. to that glorious place. Amen. You know what? we got to let everybody know what heaven's going to be like. It's going to be, you're going to be glad you're there. Have you ever been someplace you, and you looked and you thought you beheld God's glory and you said, you know what, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Whatever you've seen here that looked like that is going to look like a trash dump compared to everything over there. Amen. 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 No matter how awestruck we are with God's glory here, it's going to be so much more magnified up there. But you know what? That's not the reason we want to go there. We'll see Jesus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, that's just His gift to us. That's His that's gift right. to us, His reward to us. And that's, that's the main difference between God and all the man-made God. <coughs> God created us, yes, to have a relationship. And yes, we're supposed to work for Him. God created us to serve us. It's a it's a patron relationship. It's just like you hire a doctor to tell you what you need to do to get healthy. You you hire a lawyer to tell you what you need to do to get legal or whatever. It's a patron relationship, and it's, it's just he wants to serve us. I mean, we can't give him anything anyway. I mean, he owns it all. And yes, we're supposed to work for him and bring other people in. But this is this is the difference between God and all man-made idols. Man-made idols you have to serve. God wants to serve you. If a, Amen. That's the difference. Amen. Would you stand, please? Bow your head, please, and close your eyes. Now, the things that we were shown in the scripture tonight are not just things that we should joke about. It's a way of life that we're supposed to live. And we need to be serious about believing we can live this way. The world tells us you can't live this way. The world tells us you can't do this, you can't do that. The Bible says, contrary to what they teach. And me and you can do all things through Jesus Christ who gives us strength. He gives us strength because He has all power in heaven and earth. And He'll give you whatever you need to honor and glorify Him. He's given us an armor He's given us a spirit. He's given us a word. But the most important gift that ever came from our Father was His Son, Jesus Christ. And now, if you don't have Him, you don't have anything. It's only by Him that we can get there. These altars are open tonight struggling in life and you're struggling with understanding what's going around you, you know what? We, we don't need to try to even try to understand this world. We can't. Because we can't understand the powers. Remember what Paul said? He said, our warfare is not against, against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities of the air, of the darkness. You seen that scripture tonight? Who has all power over all principalities, even those of darkness? It's the one who is the light of the world, Jesus. And everything we are, and everything we'll ever be, if we do it to His glory, to His honor, it'll all be recorded, and you'll be rewarded for that. But the greatest part about heaven is not going to be the new Jerusalem. It's not going to be the new earth. It's going to be finally meeting that woman that made the way for us. 
that one who gave us all so that we could be there. Amen. Jesus Christ. He is that way. God bless you all. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for your support for your church and for this church and for coming and listening and thank you for allowing me to be able to share God's word with you. It's I love it. I enjoy every minute of this. Amen. God is so great. Thank y'all for that. Our visitors that are here, y'all y'all almost ain't visitors no more. We just uh, <laughs> we, we see people come around and, and uh, we don't even like to say you're visitors around here because you're family. Amen. Amen. You know, Jesus, you're our brothers and sisters in Christ and we welcome you. And glad to see you when you're here. Amen. Amen. Thank y'all for being here. God bless you all. Hope you have a great week this week. And uh, remember to tell somebody about your Savior, about Jesus. And let them see Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. Brother Jim Voss, would you pray this message? Dear Lord, we just thank you for the day that you've given us. Thank you for the opportunities we've had to come to study your word and to worship today. Lord, just ask you to be with each one of us as we go away from this place. Just give us a boldness to bring you to a lost and dying world. Lord, those that are not here because of illness or for whatever reason having to travel, Lord, just ask you to be with them and just touch them in the way that you see fit. Lord, just bring us back to the next opportunity. Lord, just lead us and guide us and direct us in each and everything that we do, that it be for your honor and your glory. We ask these things in thy name. Amen. Amen, Amen. brother. Amen.